We'd like to continue the veterinary basics for this module five, and this is breeds. We're going to cover breeds, and mostly dog breeds. Uh, by no means am I a horse expert. We'll mention something about horses, but not much, to be honest. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about them. But mostly we'll talk about dog breeds. It's important to know breeds. Uh, people, if you go up to a uh, poodle and call it a Bichon, or if you go up to a, a Malwa and call it a Shepherd, uh, people will think, well, if they don't know the breeds, they must not know what they're doing. So it's important to know your breeds from that aspect. And, and so we'll go over this and get this done. Uh, in 2013, I just put this up here. This is, I could actually find a chart for 2017 of this. Compared the dogs seen at the Animal Medical Center in New York, the pets best insurance breeds most commonly insured, and then the American Kennel Club, uh, the top breeds for American Kennel Club. And you can see where dachshunds fall in here. Uh, the reason that I highlighted dachshunds is because uh, it's a big source of, of chiropractic uh, treatment and care. Uh, a lot of dachshunds come to see me. I always say that dachshunds sent my kids to college. And then Labrador, because Labrador is the number one breed out there. Now this chart shows you the 2017, 16, 15, 14, 13 rank of these breeds. And by far the most common breed, uh, the most popular breed out there is a Labrador Retriever consistently. Number two is German Shepherd. Number three is Golden Retriever. Uh, so you can see that's been fairly consistent. Uh, the top three have remained the same for about the last four or five years. Uh, below that it starts dropping uh, some differences and variances. Uh, Poodles been pretty consistent, number seven, number eight. Beagles, number five, number six. Bulldogs, believe it or not, are fairly popular. And Frenchies, little Frenchies, are popular. Back in 2013, they were number 11. In 2017, they were number four. So just going over here, and this is the most common breeds. The most common breeds you see. So we'll definitely discuss these breeds as we go through this. Uh, top 10 breeds as far as cost goes, uh, spending cost uh, at the veterinarian. Uh, English Bulldogs are by far the most expensive breed to take care of and primarily because of uh, all the breathing issues I have, the musculoskeletal issues I have, uh, the breeding issues I have, whelping issues, they just have a, a lot of problems. Uh, French Bulldog number two and you'll see a lot of Frenchies in your practice. You just see a lot of English Bulldogs uh, back when I had my clinic. haven't really seen that many uh, lately. Like I said, I did see them a lot back when I had my clinic. I had uh, two English Bulldog breeders and I was constantly uh, you know, taking puppies uh, from those dogs as far as helping them whelp. Uh, they just had problems having birth. Uh, they just, because of the size of their head and shoulders, they have a difficult time getting through the birth canal. But interesting stats. Great pictures of the most common breeds out there. Here's your sporting breeds, and by no means are we going to cover all these different breeds of dogs, but the different sporting breeds, and some of these I see uh, on a regular basis, uh, some I don't. Uh, you know, uh, how many flat coat retrievers do you see in practice? Not many. I see a few Britneys, you know, a lot of Cocker Spaniels, um, Setters, not so much anymore. Irish Setters used to be popular 25, 30 years ago, not near as much anymore. Uh, Weimar runners, no. Vizlas, I'll see a few. Uh, but Safone Italiano, I've never seen one. So, you know, just some of these dogs you'll never see. Of course, a lab. Working breeds, uh, see a lot of Malmutes, uh, you know, Dobies, I'll see Dobies. Uh, Commodores, just because of the difficulty of taking care of their hair coat, these are not a very popular breed. You will see some Mastiffs sometimes. New fees not so common down here as they are up north. Burmese Mountain Dogs, I had a couple clients of Burmese Mountain Dogs. Uh, Black Russian Terrier, I may have seen one in my whole life. I do see a fair number of Great Danes uh, out here and, and Great Pyrenees Dogs. Toy Breeds, these are more popular, more common, just because they're easier to, to handle and take care of and they don't cost as much to, to feed. But you'll see these guys. Cavalier King Charles Spaniels have a lot of Stringo Maili, a lot of problems these dogs, little Chihuahuas, we see these dogs a lot. Havanese, great little breed of dog. Italian Greyhounds, great dog chiropractic, you can palpate everything on these guys, you really can. Maltese, I'll see these guys. Yorkies, I've had Yorkies, good little dogs. Pugs, pretty popular, of course, poodles. Uh, which I think is one of the best dogs out there. Uh, I don't well, I necessarily like them cut like this, but a uh, great dog. Papillons, good little dogs. Minpins. 
hounds. Uh, you'll see occasional hounds out there, a fair number of greyhounds, uh, harriers, not that common. Norwegian elk hound is not common much anymore. Uh, we, of course, uh, some of these feral hounds, I may have seen one in my life. Bassets, uh, I see some bassets. Beagles, pretty common. Uh, the English foxhound, not so much around here. Of course, your dachshunds, uh, you'll see on a regular basis, very, very common dog. Irish wolfhounds, of course, you know, we have the lady who brings Irish wolfhounds to our, our uh animal chiropractic program herding breeds you got to watch these guys they can be snippy sometimes especially Australian shepherds Australian cattle dogs uh, of course you know Levi uh, Dr. Parrish's dog uh, so they, but these guys sometimes be a little little snippy uh, Shelton sheep dogs little Shelties pretty common breed Bouvier de Flanders also have a few of these these are often misidentified as giant schnauzers Yards I'll see occasional of these the Belgian Malois, very common dog, very smart dog. We have some of these come to our, our chiropractic program as well. Terriers, pretty common. Uh, terriers were bred primarily as ratters to catch rats, uh, so they tend to be snippy dogs, pretty fast and pretty snippy. Uh, dogs are pretty quick out there. Little Manchester Terriers. Had a great uncle of mine. He used to breed uh, the uh, fox, ter uh, fox uh, terriers, wire hair terriers, these fox terriers. Bedlington's I'll see an occasional one of these, not many bull terriers, pretty bullheaded dog. Uh, takes a fair amount to, to handle this dog. You won't see many of these guys. Of course, American Staffordshire Terrier. Non-sporting breeds. Uh, Bichons, uh, good little dogs. They really are Boston Terriers, good little dogs. There's your bulldog. Chinese Sharpe, they just say is a short-haired chow. Uh, Dalmatians don't see many of these dogs much anymore, uh, to be honest. Uh, pretty strong-willed dog. There's a standard poodle. Skipper keys, uh, we'll see these. Of course, we have these in our testing center. Uh, Diane brings these to the animal I mean, the chiropractic lab practicals. Losses, real common dogs. Little Frenchies, great little dogs. Great personality dogs. Just to remind you, we talked uh, in the previous module, uh, our previous lecture, about the dog bite deaths or pit bulls and rottweilers. Uh, you can see here the numbers of dog bite related deaths from January 2005 to 2016. Uh, these blue bars, and you see the, the pit bull relationship and the pit bull rottweilers combined. So you got to be careful about these dogs. Just to remind you to be very careful. Uh, dogs were bred for very specific purposes. Uh, the dog, your little poodle, your little chihuahua, is actually a wolf. It's Canis lupus familiaris, or as the wolf is Canis lupus lupus. So it's the same genus species as the wolf, and that's why dogs and wolves can interbreed and actually have viable offspring. So they are the same genus species, or just a different subspecies. So our dogs are actually wolves and they were selectively bred for very specific purposes uh, early on in the domestication process to perform specific functions. Where we get into trouble with lots of these dogs is that they are not allowed to fulfill their intended genetic purpose. Uh, if, you, <laughs> if you have an apartment and you get a border collie and you expect that border collie to live in that apartment all day long while you're at work and sit there and be a good dog and do nothing, uh, you're going to be sadly mistaken. Uh, border collie was bred and designed to, to herd sheep or herd cattle and basically uh, if, if you don't give that dog a job, uh, that dog's going to create a job. So they'll get into all kinds of issues. Uh, stress that causes stress. Uh, stress can lead to subluxations obviously and then that can cause issues so uh, you got you this, this static lifestyle can lead to organic disease uh, I think it's important that uh, you understand that and, and when you start seeing a lot of these dogs unfortunately are put to sleep because they they uh, have developed behavior problems or chewing up the owner's house they've got separation anxiety they have all kinds of issues and they have these because they're not being allowed to fulfill their genetic potential Okay, let's go through different breeds. Here's an Afghan hound. Afghan hounds were used to hunt. These, these are sight hounds. They were used to hunt uh, wolves and gazelles, and they're very fast dogs. Uh, they're built a lot like a greyhound from a lot of perspectives, except obviously they have this very long hair. They require plenty of, of, of exercise. And, and I, I go through periods where I'll see these dogs occasionally. Uh, I don't have any in my practice right now. 
I had a breeder uh, who had about 50 of these dogs who used to take care of her Afghans. Airedale Terriers. Airedales can be fairly uh, aggressive type dogs. Uh, they have to they have a certain personality. It takes a strong-willed person to own an Airedale. Uh, they're the largest of all the terriers. They were used to hunt badgers and otters. Uh, they come from England. Uh, these dogs are, are can be pretty strong-willed. Uh, I caution you with these dogs. Uh, be careful. Akitas. Akitas uh, probably descended from the Spitz dog. They're from Japan. They were used to hunt big game like bear. Uh, that's the reason for the very thick hair, hair coat to protect the dog. Uh, they can be aggressive. Uh, they can be strong-willed dogs. You can see the size of these dogs. They get pretty good size. Uh, so be careful. Use caution with these dogs. Alaska Malamute. Uh, they were sled-pulling dogs. They were bred for stamina. Can run for long, long, long distances. Uh, Strong-willed dog. They can be aggressive. Uh, they, they talk to you. Uh, they'll holler out. They tend to have low pain thresholds. In general, Malamutes, uh, kind of similar to Alaskan Huskies uh, from that aspect. Just be careful. Caution with these dogs. American Eskimo, the Spitz. Uh, again, I go through spells with these dogs. I'll see a bunch for a while, then I won't see any at all. Right now, I'm not seeing any at all. They're very intelligent dogs, very trainable dogs, but they, they're known to snap. Uh, so uh, watch these dogs. They're going to be fairly uh, quick, quick biters. American Pit Bull Terrier. Uh, we've talked about this dog. This dog was bred to fight in a pit. Uh, and can be great dogs. I've had some great pit bull dogs, but uh, there's a part of their genetic makeup uh, that basically if they if you trigger that, if you flip that little switch, uh, they, they kind of go crazy and uh, they just attack and once they start it's hard to back them off. Uh, as I said, they're the most common dog involved with human deaths. Uh, extremely powerful jaws. You can see the size of the temporalis muscle, the size of the master muscle in these dogs. Uh, and their ownership is actually restricted in many areas in many states. So you got to be aware of that. Australian Shepherd, this is a, a herding dog bred to herd sheep. Uh, again, it's an intelligent, very trainable dog. Uh, it tends to be nippy, as a lot of these herding dogs are, because they nip at the heels of the sheep and the cattle to get them to move. They need lots of exercise. Uh, be cautious with this dog. Be careful. Uh, you'll see subluxation in this dog, but just again, just use, use common sense. Basinjis. Uh, Basinjis were bred to, to hunt. Uh, basically uh, an Australian type dog. Uh, they don't bark. They do make a very high pitched kind of a whine noise, but they don't bark. Uh, they're actually, I said Australia actually bred in the Congo, uh, but yet they're all, also found in Australia. Uh, Basinji means bush thing. Uh, this is an African dog, and I said it was bred to hunt. Uh, they're intelligent. Um, one of the most significant bites I ever had that was from a Basinji, uh, so be careful with these guys. Basset hounds, a lot of back problems. You can see this is a chondrodysplastic breed. Uh, you can see the very short arms and, and, and legs on this dog, very long back. Uh, so this is a, a dwarf, uh, so therefore they have a lot of cartilaginous endochondral ossification issues in these dogs. They have back problems. Uh, they tend to howl and bay and, and uh, they, they, like I said, have a lot of extremity issues because of the malformation of their extremities. They're bred to hunt rabbits, beagles. Beagles are great little dogs. They're bred to hunt rabbits too. They work in packs. Uh, fox, they're also bred to hunt fox. Very energetic dog, likes to howl, needs a lot of train, a lot of exercise. Uh, they, they, they're good little dogs. They can be hard to train. Uh, what the, the, the joke about beagles are, they're just a nose with four legs and a great senses of smell. Uh, if you go through airports, especially the uh, um, entry points to airports uh, for uh, inspection from foreign countries and things are used at airports uh, to, to sniff food and, and, and uh, produce and things. Uh, my mother-in-law was going to the airport one time coming back from Scotland and uh, she walked in and the, and the uh, agent stopped her and he said, uh, you have, uh, do you have anything in your, in your, in your suitcase, suitcase to uh, proclaim or claim? And she said, no. And he said, well, I disagree. And she says, what? And he says, you have a banana in there. And she said, what? And, and son of a gun, this dog had picked out. And how he knew it was a banana, I don't know. But the dog picked up on it. So great little dogs. These are good dogs. Uh, the Belgian Terrapin, these are good little dogs. Very, very smart, very intelligent. Uh, they, they're good with families. Uh, just a, it's an overall good dog. You'll see a lot of these guys uh, on occasion. They're just they're well well bred dog. People mistake these for German Shepherds that are not. Um, but they're they're fast dogs. They're well trainable. They're used a lot for uh, search and rescue and guard dogs, things like that, or drug dogs. 
Burmese Mountain Dog, very strong-willed dog. Uh, it's got this pretty color to black and tan and white. Uh, they tend to be uh, pretty pig-headed, strong-willed dogs, as I said. Uh, they basically a one owner type dog. They do well with one or they don't adjust well if you try to switch homes after about 18 months of age. So uh, get them as a puppy, keep them in the home and they'll do fine. I have a couple of clients who have Burmese Mountain Dogs. Australian Cattle Dog. Uh, you know this dog. Uh, it's a hard working dog. It can cover huge distances. Uh, very loyal, very gentle dog. can be easily trained. Good dog. Can be a little snippy though. You gotta watch them. It can be a little snippy, as all these all these dogs are. These these herding breeds can be. Bashan for Z. Uh, people people misidentify this dog. It's a poodle. Uh, it's not a poodle. Uh, this one's obviously well cut. You can tell the difference. But when they're not well cut, they they look more like poodles. Uh, gentle little dogs. Great personalities. I see a fair number of these dogs. Great with children. Great with other pets. They're just a very good little friendly little puppy. Uh, very very good little dogs. Border Collies, supposedly the most intelligent of the dogs out there. There's Border Collies who have uh, vocabularies, excess of hundreds of words. Uh, very, very highly intelligent, very excellent working dog. Uh, primarily designed to work sheep. Uh, if you've ever seen these dogs work, it's just incredible to watch them work and have, have, have them respond to whistle commands, things such as that. Very agile. Uh, they're lean in body. Uh, they can work all day. They just have incredible uh, stamina, incredible uh, abilities to just just keep working and keep going but you got to have something for them to do if you don't if they don't have a job they'll make a job they'll create a job so uh, basically uh, they'll herd kids they'll, they'll herd anything they just they have this this overwhelming uh, desire to herd and to work and and uh, they're, they're, this is not a dog designed uh, for city life or living in an apartment it's got to have exercise the Borzoi uh, again another sight hound uh, runner. Uh, these dogs, uh, sometimes called Russian Wolfhounds, uh, they're uh, intelligent dogs. They're known for speed. Uh, they're going to have a lot of back issues, T1301 issues, just because of the flexing of the spine there uh, in running. Boston Terrier, sweet little dogs. You'll see lots of these. Uh, it's a companion dog. Uh, it's it's rarely sheds. It has a pretty high, tight hair coat. Doesn't shed much. Doesn't have much smell. Some dogs who complain about odor smell or, or dogs smelling bad. Dog odors. This is a good dog for them. It is a brachycephalic breed, so it does have this kind of punched in nose, if you will. So it does have some teeth issues. They can be a little snippy sometimes. Uh, so we've got to kind of watch that occasionally. And also watch them when you hold hold them and hold them by the heads because again, the dogs don't have a don't have a bony orbit. And can have issues with their eyes. Bouviated Flanders is a very intelligent dog. Uh, kind of like a werewolf. <laughs> it's it's a very powerful dog. Uh, used as a guard dog. Used as a herding dog. Also used in police work. Uh, loves people. Uh, just a good dog. A very intelligent dog. Boxers. Uh, boxers are, are great dogs. Uh, great personalities. But again, they're they're the mostler breed, so they're involved. Uh, uh, with with bites and things, and you can you can see some mean boxers, although they're rare. Uh, they they uh, they're people dogs. They adapt well to people and adapt well to children. Uh, it says they should never be aggressive, but I have seen aggressive boxers. So you got to be a little careful with them. Uh, you shouldn't breed aggressive boxers. You should neuter them. So they tend to be pretty hyper, in some cases. Brittany Spaniels is a hunting dog. Uh, very agile dog, strong, very energetic, can run and hunt birds all day long. Uh, it, it, it's the only spaniel that points to game. Uh, very good with kids. Uh, you know, it, it's it's agreeable with other pets. Don't see a lot of Britneys anymore. I, I go through spells where you see Britneys and not. English Bulldog. Uh, remember, this is the most expensive dog veterinary wise. You can see the size of this dog's head, the size of the shoulders. Uh, the female dog has a hard time helping these puppies. Uh, it's a symbol of Great Britain, this dog is. It, it, it's, it's a very friendly dog. It just gets along with everybody. It's got to have a great personality because if it didn't have a great personality, uh, no one would own these dogs. Uh, they tend to drool, uh, they snore. Uh, they they're, they're messy uh, to take care of, uh, but they're just they're 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 great dogs. Uh, they're great couch potato dogs. They don't need a lot of exercise. Uh, they it says that they they it says they do not drool, but they do. Uh, they don't drool as bad as like a 
as bad as like a, a, a St. Bernard or something like that, but yet they, they tend to drill. Bull Mastiff's great dog, big dog, natural guardian. These dogs are used uh, as, as fighting dogs by the Romans. They're, they're, they're guard dogs, a very strong, heavy-bodied dog. Uh, they make good pets, but they're just huge. They're big dogs. Bull Terriers, very pig-headed dog, strong-willed dog. Uh, it's a dominant, aggressive type of personality. Uh, this was the famous George Patton dog. Uh, it, it would get in fights. It tends to, to it doesn't like you know cats and small breeds and things like that. It tends to want to fight. So be careful of this dog. Kevlar King Charles Spaniel. Uh, I see a lot of these. Uh, it's it's a it's pretty much just a lap dog. Doesn't require a lot of exercise. Has a lot of issues with stringomyelia. Uh, also back problems, uh, so this dog is going to be in your clinic seeking adjustments. It's a very sweet looking little dog, and great disposition, uh, it's a good dog with people. Karen Terriers, uh, this is Toto and the Wizard of Oz dog, uh, hard working little terrier. Uh, it's a sporting terrier, it's very energetic, uh, it's, it's hard to keep still. Uh, basically, a good little dog though, called Karen Terrier. Catahoula, this is a cow dog. It's a, just a great working dog. Uh, they're very intelligent, they're loyal, they're very energetic. Uh, but you need a, a home in which this dog can get a lot of exercise. They use this dog oftentimes to hunt, uh, hunt boar, wild boar, uh, wild pigs. You gotta be careful, and, and, and that, you gotta be really careful of dogs used to hunt pigs, because the, the, the hogs, especially the tusks, can really hurt these dogs. So a lot of these dogs will, will wear vests uh, to protect them, but I've seen dogs hurt pretty bad hunting pigs. Chesapeake Bay Retriever, not a common dog down here in the south. Uh, it kind of looks like a Labrador. Chihuahuas, a very common dog. Uh, this is your Paris Hilton dogs, if you will. Uh, they're small, uh, but they can be aggressive. Uh, they can be pretty aggressive sometimes, and a lot of veterinarians call them uh, little alligators. Uh, because of the small size of these dogs, oftentimes their fontanelle, their frontal fontanelle does not close, which means they have a, a case of hydrocephalus. So watch that. Always feel for soft spots here on the dog's head. Uh, if you see a soft spot, be very careful about adjusting this dog's head or doing any type of, of occiput work on this dog uh, because that usually means they're hydrocephalic. Chows. Uh, what can I say about chows? They've uh, been around for a long period of time. Very, very thick hair coats are hard to palpate because of that. They're very straight and stifle, have a lot of knee issues, have a lot of shoulder issues. Uh, chows kind of come and go as far as popularity. They're definitely a one family dog. Uh, people who own chows love them. Uh, they're loyal dogs to the family, but they can be aggressive to other people. Uh, they're, from a veterinary perspective, they're hard to work on. They have the classic blue mouth and blue tongue uh, that, that you see in these dogs, same as Sharpays. Uh, they're, they're pretty dogs, but take a lot of care for their hair coat, uh, especially down here in the south. Cocker Spaniels, common dog, uh, very common breed of dog. People love Cockers, have a lot of ear problems, see a whole lot of ear infections in Cocker Spaniels, so you'll see you'll be treating things like that. Uh, they do have back problems, you'll see that too. Uh, cockers have a tendency uh, as an adult dog sometimes they just go crazy. They'll be fine as puppies and doing great then around six, seven years of age. Uh, they just go bonkers. Uh, they tend to have seizures sometimes, uh, so you gotta kinda watch this with Cockers. Collies, uh, great, the classic lassie dog, a uh, very long nosed dog. Uh, there are several hair coats with this dog, the smooth coat and the rough coat. Uh, but basically, uh, it's a great family dog, a really good human companion. Don't see a lot of these down here in the south, though. Well, it's corgis. The corgis, uh, these dogs have a lot of back problems. They're long, long back dogs. Uh, they can be a little aggressive in some cases. Uh, they make good companions, though they're good companion dogs, and, and uh, they usually like kids. Dachshunds, another chondrodysplastic breed, uh, basically uh, real short arms and legs. They have extremity issues, uh, but the primary issue in dachshunds is the back. These dogs are bred to hunt uh, basically hunt badgers to crawl down in the hole of a badger and pull a badger out and the badger is a pretty aggressive animal. 
Uh, so the, these these guys can be pretty aggressive. One of the worst bites I ever had in my life was from a dachshund. Almost took my finger off. Uh, so you got to be careful of these dogs. And Muslim, if you have any concerns at all, they have a lot of back problems. And I think early on, you got to train these owners not to let them jump off couches, not to let them jump off chairs. Uh, you know, just don't let them do that because it's that culmination of all those little micro traumas all those years that tend to lead to herniated disc and herniated disc disease. Dalmatians, uh, this is that classic, you know, fire truck dog. They basically are one owner type dogs. Uh, they tend to get anxious when left alone. Uh, they are intelligent dogs. I don't see a lot of these dogs, so. Pinscher, Dorman Pinscher is probably my favorite breed of all times. Uh, very, very intelligent dog, great endurance and speed. Uh, just a beautiful dog. Uh, uses a police dog, uh, used in, in by the Marine Corps for a long time. They quit using Dobermans because Dobermans got too smart, and once they were trained to attack and, and kill, they, they oftentimes would not obey their owner from that perspective. So, uh, But they're great dogs, uh, very, very intelligent dogs, and, and uh, I think probably... Uh, Got to be a little careful with with people who who are not strong-willed. Dobies will, will will dominate you pretty quickly. So you got to be pretty strong-willed and control these dogs. Pointers, great breed of dog as well. Uh, but can, these dogs can be crazy though. Again, if they don't have a job, uh, they'll make a job. Uh, I had a pointer one time, and it's, and it's a puppy, and at eight weeks of age, this dog was pointing uh, butterflies and and everything it could. I mean, it just 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 and these dogs require a lot of exercise. A lot of exercise, so you gotta make sure you can exercise these dogs if you have one. English setters, beautiful dogs. Uh, the setter, classic setter tail here. I uh, don't see a lot of these down here anymore. Uh, Llewellyn setter is a, just a, a variant of this English setter, but good dogs. English Springer Spaniel. Uh, be careful this dog. Uh, believe it or not, it's commonly involved in bite cases and not deaths per se, but bite cases. Uh, these dogs can be kind of aggressive sometimes. You can see this this dog's look here in the in the bottom picture. Uh, you got to keep their hair coat clean, their hair coat brushed out. They're they're they're, they're field dogs, so they're bird dogs. Little Frenchies, great dog for kids. Uh, just a just a really good little dog for kids. You can dress these dogs up. You can put them in in you know strollers and carry them around with you, things like that. Uh, they just great little dogs. They have a lot of problems though. They have a lot of back problems and and shoulder and leg problems. So from that perspective, you'll you'll see them in your clinic. German Shepherd. Uh, Shepherd's one of those dogs, very, very intelligent dog, very easily trained, uh, but low pain threshold. Uh, these dogs uh, don't take pain well. Uh, they have hip issues, they have shoulder issues, they have uh, spinal cord problems. Older Shepherds tend to get a degenerative myelopathies and become paralyzed in their rear legs. So they have a lot of issues, but they're, they're great dogs. I mean, they're very intelligent and make great, great guard dogs and great police dogs. GSPs, German short hair pointers. Uh, I like these dogs. Uh, again, though, a uh, very, very energetic breed. Uh, they need to have someone to play with, something to do. Uh, you just got to have good exercise for these dogs because if you don't, uh, they'll, they'll go crazy on you. Giant Schnauzers. Uh, you don't see a lot of these much. These, like I said, are oftentimes misidentified as Bouviers or vice versa. Golden Retrievers, probably the most. I mean, it's his most popular breed currently. Actually, Labradors are, but Goldens are in the top three. Uh, but this dog loves to please. This dog will smile at you. A lot of people misidentify that smile as a growl or a snarl, but they'll smile at you. Great dog. They're just really, really, really good dogs. They are very prone to cancer, though, because I think they were highly inbred for a period of time. Uh, so we've got to watch cancer in these dogs. Be very cognizant of that. Gordon Setter. Uh, I don't see many of these dogs. Greyhounds, golly, this is the most perfect uh, chiropractic dog. You can palpate everything on this dog. A well-muscled rump, uh, good dogs that tend to be sometimes not, they don't get along well with other dogs. Uh, in, in cases, they tend to be uh, loyal, one family type dogs. Used to hunt uh, against sighthounds. 
Great Pyrenees. Uh, these dogs can be aggressive, although they're not supposed to be. I have seen aggressive Great Pyrenees. These dogs were bred to, to basically protect and, and defend cattle. Uh, they have a weather-resistant hair coat. They're usually white. They have multiple toes, uh, multiple dew claws, which is one of the characteristics of a breed. Great Danes, um, good dog. Uh, I've very seldom ever met a mean Dane, but you can find them sometimes. Uh, so they're like good family dogs, but they got to have room. Uh, they got to have room to move, room to run, uh, and they they just basically, uh, you know, they got to have exercise out there. Not nothing like a German Shepherd Pointer, but yet the size is tall. They got to have some, you know, room to run. Our Setters, I think, one of the prettiest dogs out there. Uh, big Red or Red Setter. It's, it's not as heavy bodied as some of the other setters, uh, but it can be a very good dog, friendly dog, good with kids. Irish Wolfhound, you know the size of this dog, giant dog. Uh, you know, it can get these dogs get to be 160, 170, 180 pounds. Uh, usually, a pretty good dog, though, which is good. Uh, these dogs were bred to hunt wolves. Jack Russell Terrier, Parson Jack Russell Terrier, Parson Terriers, uh, very, very popular dogs, been made popular on television uh, out there, very, very hyper dog, uh, but it's a tough little dog, I tell you, it's a good little dog, they're smart, uh, if you can put up with their hyperness, they're, they're good dogs. Keishans, uh, Keishans, again, not so popular here in the south because of their hair coat, but you will see them occasionally. Labrador is the most popular dog out there. Uh, a hunting dog, though, this dog is hunt, needs to hunt. And one of the problems to get into uh, with Labradors is that they're not given adequate exercise. They start developing behavioral issues. So it's important to, to give this dog exercise. It's a gun dog. It's a hunting dog. It's designed to jump in cold water and hunt ducks or retrieve ducks. Little Losses. Uh, Losses are great little family dogs, great with kids. Uh, I showed you a picture earlier, though, of a, of a child bitten by a Lhasa, so they can. But all dogs bite, but they're, they're cute little dogs. You'll see lots of these in practice, too. They have a lot of back issues. Maltese, uh, very pristine, brushed out. Show Maltese here. They don't usually look near this pretty, uh, but they, they love being petted. They're, they're basically lap dogs, uh, to be honest with you, you know, and good, good, small dogs, small house dogs. Mastiffs, again, used uh, to hunt and, and used in war. Uh, these used guardians, these are big dogs. They, they, need, they need to be uh, have exercise, room to move. Little min pins, uh, these guys can, the little, little tight miniature pincers, I think they're little Dobermans. Uh, they can be very uh, snippy and snappy and fast and hyper. Uh, I had a little min pin one time and a great little dog. Uh, but she, she thought she's a Doberman and she'd jump on anything. So uh, be careful with these guys. They can be a little snappy sometimes, muzzle them. Mitch Schnauzer, uh, these dogs bark. Uh, that's one thing I'm going to say about Schnauzer is they bark. So if you don't want a barking dog, don't get a Schnauzer. They're great alert dogs, great house dogs. They'll uh, let you know if anyone gets anywhere near your house. Uh, basically, uh, they, they're, they're neat dogs, they're, they're cool little dogs, and they're pretty popular. You'll see them in practice. Newfies and Newfies not very common down here in the south. Uh, they're they're very devoted dogs, uh, very very uh, protective dogs, and they actually they're known for the ability to swim and been known to rescue drowning victims. So, uh, but you got you got to have a, a room for this dog. It's a big dog. Papillons, small dogs, uh, big ears, uh, very very sweet little dog usually long-lived. Uh, they're good travelers. They, they, they like to be held a lot. Uh, they're, they're definitely smart little dogs, good little dogs. Pekingese. Uh, Pekingese dogs, again, a brachycephalic breed, so be careful when you're holding this dog, especially be careful when you're holding the dog around the head, the eyes. Uh, the eyes can pop out of these dogs if you put too much pressure here behind the eye, so be careful with that. Same thing with pugs. Uh, pugs and peaks most commonly associated with that. Uh, it's an independent little dog, but a good little dog, likes to be held, likes to be a little lap dog, likes to be center of attention. Pomeranians, uh, these are nice little dogs, very loving, very affectionate dogs. Uh, good little, little toy breed, again, great for houses. Uh, it's 
just a good little bitch guy. Watch the haircut. He's got to keep the haircut brushed out. Here's Pugs. Again, watch the eyes on Pugs. Break the valley. Breathe. They have teeth problems and things like that. Uh, it's it's uh, sweet little dogs. Uh, they tend to have breathing issues. They tend to have stenotic nares. You gotta watch the nose on these dogs. Uh, they can have hard times breathing. Oftentimes, they tend to have shoulder issues. So watch these dogs. Rat terriers bred to hunt rats. Uh, it's very protective. Very a very good house dog. Uh, they'll they're very smart. You can train these guys pretty easily. Rhodesian Ridgebacks um, basically bred to hunt lions. Uh, got this very distinctive ridge down their back of hair. The hair grows the opposite direction. Very, very uh, dogs of great endurance. They they can run for long periods of time. I've had several Rhodesian Ridgeback patients uh, with back issues. Roddy's again number two dog associated with uh, human deaths. This dog was designed to protect cattle. That's a guard dog, a very effective guard dog. Uh, you should use extreme caution. Now, one thing about Roddy's, Roddy's will talk to you. Uh, they talk, and sometimes it's very difficult to distinguish. Are they talking or are they growling? Uh, so, again, if you have any questions at all, I, I usually typically always muzzle Rottweilers before I adjust them. Samoids, uh, kind of look like a Spitz, uh, if you will. Uh, don't see many of these dogs that are long hair coat here in the south. You don't see a lot of these guys. Skipper Keys, as I said, we bring, they bring these to the lab practical, so you've seen those dogs in there. Uh, the naturally clean little dog was, was a ship dog. These dogs were bred to, to catch rats on ships uh, back in the, in the days when, when the, 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 you know, the sailing ships would sail across the ocean. Scotty Terriers, uh, one of the, supposedly one of the most powerful bites of any dog out there. These dogs can be very independent, very, uh, very stubborn. Uh, kind of kind of self-willed, if you will. Uh, people on them love them, though. People on Scotties are devoted Scotty owners. Chinese Sharpe, uh, just a short-haired Chow. Uh, it was a fi used as a fighting dog. That's all this loose skin here was used to protect the dog. So grab the skin, but you couldn't get down to deeper tissues. It's a good watch dog. I'd use caution with this breed. Shelties, good little dogs. See lots of Shelties. Uh, he just he wants to please you. It's a good little dog. They can be a little barky though. I make good frisbee dogs. Siberian Husky, uh, sweet natured dog, good dogs, but kind of like the Malamutes. They tend to have low pain thresholds. They tend to ho holler and talk to you about things. Designed to pull sleds and pull wagons, things like that. Sometimes it can be hard to work with. Silky Terriers, uh, it's a family dog, one family dog, it's obedient, pretty easily trained, pretty good little dog. Fox Terriers, uh, again don't see a lot of these anymore. Uh, this dog wants to play all the time though, so make sure you get, provide plenty of exercise for this dog. Staffordshire Bull Terrier, uh, basically uh, pretty much like the Pit Bull dogs. Uh, these dogs are big, strong-bodied dogs, aggressive dogs. They tend to want to fight. Standard Poodle. Uh, I, I personally think Poodles are great dogs. Uh, very tight hair coat. They don't shed. Uh, they're intelligent. Uh, this dog is actually bred as a gun dog. Uh, it swims well. Although hardly anyone uses them for those purposes anymore. A very good tempered dog. Uh, the asthma lovers like this dog because of its hair coat. It doesn't shed. It doesn't uh, put dander in the environment. So it's, it's good from that perspective. Toy poodles again. When people ask me what dog to get, this is a dog I tell them. A very intelligent dog. Uh, good disposition. Uh, very seldom has uh, any issues. Uh, sometimes has ear problems and sometimes has teeth problems. Uh, but as long as you keep the teeth clean and the ears clean, uh, these dogs do great. Uh, just good little dogs. They tend to have subluxating patellas, though. Uh, watch their knees. They can have knee issues sometimes. But uh, just, just a smart, good little dog. And it doesn't shed, which is really nice. Vizslas. Vizslas are used uh, primarily uh, as a hunter. These are hunting dogs. A lot of falconers and, and people who who you know raise birds of prey and things use these dogs uh, to retrieve ducks and things when they're out in the field uh, but good dogs I see occasionally of out there 
llama runners, uh, these dogs can be crazy. Uh, llamas can have a lot of energy uh, and just just boundless energy, uh, almost tireless. Uh, and if you can, you don't give them a job, they're going to find a job. And uh, I've known some pretty crazy llama runners in my life. West Island White Terriers, sweet little dogs, see a lot of these. Uh, loves human companions. People who have these dogs just love them. Uh, and again, they'll have some back issues sometimes because they're smaller breeds. But again, these are ratters, they're hunters, so they're going to be hunting. So, I mean, they're, they'll, they'll, you know, they, they like to have something to do. And you can help these dogs a lot by, I tell people to take Kongs, those uh, rubber Kongs, chew toys, and stuff some peanut butter and stuff some dry food inside of them and just hide them around the house. And uh, these guys will spend all day looking for these things and, and searching a house for the Kongs. And when they find them, they'll, they'll chew on them and get the food out and get the peanut butter out. And it really gives them something to do, and they, they just really enjoy it. And it really tends to help decrease the behavioral issues you see with a lot of these dogs. Whippets, again, a, a chiropractic dream. You can palpate everything in the world on this dog. Uh, it's a gentle, affectionate dog. can be a little nervous sometimes, and I've got several clients with these. Yorkies, golly, real very common dog. Uh, the the men pin I had was actually a Yorkie men pin cross, and she was a great dog. She had long hair like a Yorkie, but the body of a men pin. Uh, can be fearless. These little guys can be fearless. Uh, they're small dogs. Uh, they said they should not exceed seven pounds in weight, so they can be really frail dogs uh, from that perspective. But they they think they're Rottweilers. You know, they they're not afraid to jump on anybody. So. Uh, you'll see these dogs. Good little dogs, though. Sweet, sweet, sweet character dogs. For more on dog breeds, uh, www.akc.org.breeds is a great place to go. Uh, I, uh, there, there are many, many, many dog breeds. I think 227 some odd dog breeds out there, and by no means can I cover all of them. Uh, but if you don't know dogs, then you should learn about dogs. You should learn about the different breeds out there. Uh, because, as I said, it, it makes you look dumb if you don't know what kind of dog it is. If I don't know what it is, I'll ask versus being wrong. Uh, so, you know, just, just, just say, hey, I'm not familiar with this breed. I had a lady walk down my street yesterday who had a breed I'd never seen before, and I said, what is that? She said, it's called a Woodle. I said, a Woodle? She said, yeah, it's a Wheaton Terrier Poodle Cross. Well, I had no clue. Uh, so always ask, and then people, most people are just happy as heck to tell you what their dogs are. Horse breeds, uh, again, I'm not a horse person, but I'll go through some different things here for you. Horses evolved as grazing animals. Uh, different breeds have different purposes. Uh, you have the, the heavy body draft horses. You have the runners. Uh, you know, so, I mean, you got to, again, let them fulfill their genetic potential. And they develop problems when they're not allowed to do this. I also think horses develop problems who are put in 12 by 12 stalls uh, for 20 of the 24 hours a day and then put on, on you know, lead ropes and, and, and you know, put in the small pins and shoots. These, these horses were designed to, to you know, graze and range over lar large period or large areas. So they, they need to be moving up and moving and walking all the time. And they develop behavioral issues when they're put in stalls and left there for the whole day. Light horses turn hot blood horses. Usually weigh less than 1,500 pounds. Uses riding horses, draft horses called cold blooded horses. These are horses over 1,500 pounds, and these are your work horses. Okay, you're, 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 and ponies are smaller than horses, same genus and species, but they're just smaller. Cold blooded, uh, and different definitions here, and again, I'll refer you to the equine veterinarians for this, but designate any horse or breed of horse without Arabian or Eastern blood in its breeding. In practice, many of his so-called cold-blooded horses have been improved by use of Arab blood. Uh, distinction is based on physical type. Basically, uh, he uh, all heavy draft horses and most European native ponies are classified as cold-blooded. So again, back to here, the cold-blooded horses are your big draft horses, over 1,500 pounds. Your warm-blooded, uh, designated horse or breed of horse with Arabian or Eastern blood in its breeding. But again, these are, these are horses, your light saddle horses, your horn harness horses, things like this. These are warm-blooded horses. Hot-blooded horse or Arabs. <laughs> of course, Arab owners will tell you that Arabs are not horses. They're gifts from God, right? Appaloosa is a spotted horse. And you can read about it. Uh, the horse, they're courageous, they're docile horses. Been, been around for a long period of time. 
Arabs is that Arabs are not horses, Arabs are gifts from God, right? Arabs have this very classic, you know, dish to their nose here, this dished in area. Spirited, intelligent, pretty dogs, fast runners. Clydesdale horse, this is a, your classic Budweiser horse, draft horse, big horse, heavy bodied horse, heavy legs, heavy feet. Designed to pull pull sleds, designed to pull plows, designed to pull wagons, things such as that. The Morgan horse is an American bred horse. Used for plowing, pulling timber. It's a harness horse. It can pull heavy weights. Hard working horse. Norwegian Fjord. Uh, Norwegian Fjords I used to have these at Equest. I've been around for a long, long, long period of time. They have this done color, good disposition, good with people. They have this very distinctive mane. Here's the mane on his horse. The paint, uh, Spanish horses, brought over to the United States. This is very popular, the American Indians, uh, the indigenous people of this country. They talk about different types, the, the Overo versus the Tobiano paints, and again, it gets into coloration and things such as that, and I would stay with the horse people uh, about this. It's a very intelligent horse, very fast horse, agile horse. Palomino, the classic Roy Rogers horse here, Trigger, it's a Palomino. It's a riding horse, trail riding horse, heavy bodied horse, you see this. Percheron, Percheron, excuse me, Percheron, Percheron is a workhorse. Designed to pull plows, things such as that. Pintos, uh, Pintos, again, they talk about the Tobi Tobiano and Overo patterns with these uh, animals. Heights vary with this horse. The, the, the coloration, and again, there's a, a whole entire science of coloration with these horses. American Quarter Horse, classic, You pretty much all of you all know this horse. Uh, very easily broken horse, easily handled, used to work cattle, uh, stuff like that. Cutting horse, good horse. Uh, American Quarter Horse color chart, I'm sorry that this didn't come out very well uh, as far as being able to visualize this, but there's all sorts of colors here. Again, if you don't know, just ask the, the owner. American Saddlebred, developed in Kentucky. It's alert, intelligent horse. Um, they oftentimes cut this tail to make it stand up like this. Saddlebred horse designed to pull carts. It's a racer. Tennessee walking horse. Again, very, very docile, affectionate, intelligent horse. Easily trained. A very smooth ride on this horse. It's a mixture of several different breeds. A thoroughbred, this is a runner. This, is the, this horse won the Triple Crown. Not this horse, but a thoroughbred horse won the Triple Crown here recently. The uh, great, great, very high spirited horse. Uh, takes a lot of, of discipline to handle this horse, a trainer. Uh, this horse is designed to run. This horse wants to run, and that's what it wants to do. It's a competition horse. It's a race horse. Again, for horse breeds, uh, go to uh, this this website. It goes through a bunch of different horse breeds for you. And again, if you're going to work with horses, you need to know breeds. If you don't know, don't say. Ask. Don't look stupid. <laughs> In my early veterinary career, I made many many dumb mistakes, misidentifying you know dog breeds or cat breeds or colors of cats. Uh, I don't presume I know cat colors anymore. I just ask, what color do you call this cat? Uh, if I don't know, because the owner will gladly tell you, and it's better to ask than to be wrong. All right. Well, if you have any questions, please let me know in class, and uh, appreciate